Happy Monday, everybody. Maybe, I don't know, depends on whether or not you're following the stock market. We're obviously recording this at the bottom of the day, so we don't know how bad things actually are, but uh, happy Monday anyways. I've got an existential question for you, which is what do you do when your bones get itchy? That's something that keeps me up at night. My bones have never been itchy, but what would I do? How would I scratch them? All right, how do I touch my wet bones when they itch? Let me know down below in the comments. So let's go ahead and start off today's hot news by letting you know something hot from my personal life, which is my brother just released a new song from his band. He's the guitarist on the track. It's amazing. I love the song. So check it out if you would. I heard it described as pop metalcore is the genre that I read it was. I don't know if this appeals to you. Give him some praise. If it doesn't, just keep watching hot news. Okay, so the link for that is in the description and up there. Make it so But with that being said, let's jump into the actual tech news. We talked about in the previous episode of how there was Intel vulnerabilities that were coming out in their CPUs. In fact, there was one that couldn't be patched because it was in the security engine of the chip itself. And just as that was released, we found out that AMD and the CPUs over the last nine years have been vulnerable to data leak attacks. How could they going back nine years? That's Bulldozer and previous Ryzen, all flawed. Terrible, it's coming out. Depending on how you look at this though is how devastating this actually is. According to AMD themselves, they responded and said that this is nothing new. They just found a new way of exploiting something that has already been there. AMD came out and said they believe that these are not new speculation based attacks. It actually does appear that way. It's just a new way of using old exploits that were already known. The seriousness of this attack is of disputable concern depending on which side you're actually sitting from. However, one of the things that's being called into question with this research paper that came out and detailed the attacks is that it was partially funded by Intel. However, the researchers came out and said that the funding sources didn't at all influence the way they published this and it doesn't inhibit their academic freedom or independence. And it should be of note that these researchers have also published reports on Intel's vulnerabilities in the past. It just happens to be that this one was done on AMD and that it hasn't been fixed. However, there's also indication that this can be patched out without any performance loss and it should be okay and by no means is as serious as all of the Intel security vulnerabilities that have come out that one are unpatchable and then two have seen a ton of performance loss because of the way that they need to be patched. So this is not as bad as Intel however is a security flaw but depending on who you listen to isn't necessarily a new one just a new way of exploiting it and that way you can take what you will for it however don't necessarily conflate this with this being as bad as Intel because it's definitely not but as I said in yesterday's episode of Hot News this could just be because we're not used to the Ryzen architecture. We could find out more vulnerabilities in the future. Nobody, nobody is excluded from security vulnerabilities. Not even security companies are able to protect their information well enough that people can't get into it. There's always a vulnerability somewhere. It's just a matter of how can they be exploited and how serious are they. But then there's the conspiracy minded out there who think that this is a paid attack by Intel against AMD. When Intel's vulnerability comes out, they just make sure that the money comes out. And you, you could think that if you want, the research seems to be solid. It doesn't necessarily seem to be something that's going to destroy AMD. It's not that bad. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. I don't want to get too deep into it because I'm not a security researcher. Then just a little bit more AMD news. AMD's VP of Computing and Graphics, Rick Bergman, has said that the Ryzen 4000 APUs that are expected to come out to laptops sometime this year will be capable of up to 18 hours of battery life. Obviously, this won't necessarily apply to the highest performing one, but it would be good indication that AMD has power efficiency. They're going to be able to be productivity laptops, not just gaming laptops. But then let's go ahead and talk about something that also could potentially be overblown depending on how you read it, which is Tesla sent incomplete injury reports. California regulators say it's this coming out of Bloomberg talking about how Tesla didn't quite document all of the injuries that happened at their factory. But there's other reports that are saying Tesla reportedly omitted hundreds of injuries from government reports. But Tesla is saying that their records were verified by OSHA saying that they were 99% accurate and that 1% just happened to be left out. But when Bloomberg contacted OSHA regarding this, they couldn't verify the claims that Tesla was making. But according to a memorandum that OSHA put out, Tesla missed about three dozen and they were fined for 14 injuries or illnesses that weren't documented properly by the company. So 14, three dozen, not sure where you get hundreds. And from what we can gather, it's not necessarily serious injuries that came out, but it does help to feed the fuel of Tesla as an unsafe work environment. Tesla bad, Tesla good, I don't know. 
no. Doom Eternal though, good, because it's been confirmed that it's gonna run at 60 FPS on all platforms, minus Switch. Nobody cares about the Switch. But it's gonna run at 60 frames per second, PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One, S and X, and then also the spec requirements for the PC has come out. If you want the recommended system specs, you need a 6700K or better, or 1800X or better, and then you need a 1080 or an RTX 2060 or a Vega 56. All reasonable to hit 1440p 60 FPS. But just like the original Doom that came out in 2016, it ran really well on a whole bunch of hardware. So good stuff in case you want to play that. I'm willing to take full responsibility for the horrible events of the last 24 hours. And then, Switching gears entirely from video games to earphones, there's been leaks of the new Sony WH-1000XM4s, which are their over-ear headphones. I love my Mark IIs. I've had no reason to upgrade to the Mark IIs. Having the Mark IVs, which will be based on Bluetooth 5.0 and get better battery life, would be a decent upgrade. I don't know. What do you think of the leaks? Let me know down below. And then there's indication that the Apple Watch might be able to detect your blood oxygen levels. This is coming from source code that was found in iOS 14, showing that they might indeed be able to give you indication on what's going on with your blood oxygen levels in your body just like they can track your heart irregularities and make sure you're not going to die. Another way that the Apple Watch is probably just the best smartwatch out on the market. Hey Reese, would you like some Burger King space lettuce? Burger King space lettuce. Space lettuce. Because it's been found out that the space lettuce that was grown on the ISS, International Space Station, has just as much nutrients as regular Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> Studies are finding that the space lettuce has different microorganisms, but they're just as nutritious. So now we can grow food in space and we can eat on Mars. Thank you, Elon Musk. But not thank you, Elon Musk, for not buying this Nintendo PlayStation because it went on auction and it sold for $360,000, which sounds like a lot until you find out that the owner who sold it on auction had somebody privately come to him and offer to pay $1.2 million for it. But he didn't do that because he thought he could get more money on the auction and he got $900,000 less. Woo! Speaking of video game history, Half-Life's remaster known as Black Mesa 1.0 has officially dropped in case you want to play the original Half-Life in the best way possible, I'd suggest you check this out at the link in the video description. Good morning and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. But then let's go ahead and talk about Voldemort and let's talk about people who are affected by it and let's talk about tech companies and what they're doing to make this happen. Well, apparently Uber and Lyft will be apparently compensating drivers who get quarantined. I'm not sure how this works, but they have a compensation fund for anybody who is officially quarantined. This doesn't help them from not getting the, the sickness because they're still gonna be driving around up until the time that they get it. But as soon as they're quarantined, Uber is making it available in some markets to fund drivers infected. The details on how it's gonna work and how much they get and whether it's gonna be like a percentage of their normal amount, not clear at all. They're just saying that they're gonna help, which I guess is, is okay. It's a good it's a good step in the right direction. Just kind of need details as to whether or not I'm supposed to celebrate what you're doing or just be like, why even bother? We're gonna give you $100 a week when you used to make 150. That would be great. We're gonna give you $2 a week but then let's shift gears over to universities because Stanford has said that it's gonna close out the remainder of its winter quarter online, which is quite intriguing. They're gonna go into the spring break completely online, keeping kids out of the classroom so that the Death Eaters don't show up and give them death eating stuff. The students must be sent home. I'm afraid this is the end of Hogwarts. This is actually one of the good questions that's coming out of this whole Voldemort thing that's happening is there's tons of industries that are being impacted by what's going on that are having to shift gears, that are gonna have to teleconference, that are gonna have to telecommute. There's a bunch of ways that industries are shifting and there's some indication that they might retain that way after everything is all said and done because if universities are finding that they can just as efficiently teach students at home as they could in the classroom and they could do it for lesser cost, they would probably just stick with that. We might end up finding that a lot of jobs will become virtualized from this process Process and that the market's just gonna shift because of all of this. I don't know, that's food for thought. That's all you need to go forth and reconnect the world. To make us whole again. I'm a porter. I don't care about connecting anything. But also food for thought is that GeForce Now shouldn't have video games. At least that's what 2K is saying with Borderlands, Civilization, and other 2K games being removed from GeForce Now. But on top of that, on the opposite food, 
good food. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney has said that they support GeForce now and they're gonna stay on it because obviously Epic Games' biggest money driver is a free to play game that they depend to get into people's hands. The more people's hands it's in that can play it, the more money they're gonna make. So th just getting that and they still get the same full percent cut of everybody who's buying, buying V-Bucks and skins and all that, it makes sense for Epic to support this. Whereas other companies just want a part of that uh, licensing agreement. And then I don't know why I didn't put this next to the other stuff, but but Austin, the city of Austin, has decided to cancel South by Southwest because of Voldemort. South by Southwest wasn't gonna cancel it themselves, so it took the government coming in saying stop and comparing it to a hurricane that's looming on the horizon. You would shut down a festival for that, so we shut down South by Southwest for this. Definitely know what's going on there. Reese, what's the smelliest fruit in the world? Durian. Durian. Did you know that scientists are working to make this into computers? Why? Durian computers. Apparently what's happening is they're converting the waste fruit of durian, because people want to get rid of that, into a carbon aerogel, and then using the carbon aerogel as a replacement electrode instead of using other carbon-based stuff. It's intriguing stuff. I'll leave a link in the video description. Smelly durian fruit that nobody wants after they've eaten it, you can turn it into a computer. Anyways, I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News before I screw up my mouth even further. Don't forget to check out my brother's new band, their new song, How To Move On, at the link in the video description. Let me know if you like the pop metal core. He did great job on the guitar work. Reese said it reminded him of Chon and Polyphia. So if you like those bands, or you even know what I'm saying right now, because I sure don't, check it out. Also, don't forget to answer the existential question of the day. What do you do when your bones get itchy? How do you scratch them? How do you scratch your itchy wet bones? Need to know. Anyways, that's the end. Hit the like button, bye. What? My brain just lost it. <laughs> I had the word and it died.